Welcome to My Apple Podcast, the podcast that makes a personal connection to everything Apple. As promised, this episode I'm going to cover some features associated with iOS 6. You know, every time a new upgrade comes out every year for iOS, I don't know, it feels like my birthday or it feels like Christmas. You know, you get all these new presents. You don't have to buy a new phone. Even with the excitement surrounding the iPhone 5, you still feel like you're getting something special with the iPhone 4, iPhone 4S. More so iPhone 4S. And Apple boasts over 200 new features. A lot of them associated, of course, with the expanded Siri integration, Facebook, Twitter integration, and so forth. But nonetheless, a lot of features. uh, Introducing more accessibility, more international languages, and so forth. I'm just going to cover a handful of the features that I think really stand out. One of the new features that I'm pretty excited about is the new Maps feature. That's right, Apple decided to break with Google Maps and come out with its own mapping feature with vector graphics that give you the utmost clarity when viewing images on your mapping system, particularly the 3D images. Now, you can't get the 3D views everywhere, only in major metropolitan areas like Philadelphia. Now, I'm not living in Philadelphia right now, but I was born there, so I thought I would go ahead and do a search to Philadelphia City Hall. And I'm going to go ahead and pinch and zoom. And as you can see, it looks just like Google Maps with the 3D effect. You know, you keep zooming in. You can also use your the pinching and zooming to move around in 3D so that you can see buildings from all sides. It's really quite amazing. And if you look closely, you can see even with this capturing of my iPhone, you can still glimpse at the clarity of the images. So the vector graphics really work well with this new mapping system. And of course, if you need directions, I'm nowhere near Philadelphia, but uh, you can use a series uh, navigation system to get you where you need to go. Now, people have complained that the mapping system right now is suffering from uh, accuracies or lack of accuracies, but I'm not having any problems at all. Uh, I've been using it locally here in Alabama, and so far it's been working pretty well for me. Okay, now I know this hasn't been listed as a feature for iOS 6, but dictation has improved, at least for me on my iPhone 4S. I used it before, but occasionally I I would always get a few errors or mistakes here and there, whereas recently I've used it about 9 or 10 times in a row with no mistakes. So let me go ahead and try it out now. I'm going to open up the, nat- the notes application. That's what I use it for mostly. I'm going to go ahead here and type something in. I'm very excited about the new features that come with iOS 6 for the iPhone and iPad, period. And what do you know? Pretty perfect. The only thing it did was it spelled out the six, but not bad. And I've been using it like this continuously with no mistakes. And of course, an obvious new feature with iOS 6 is the Facebook and Twitter integration throughout the phone, uh, particularly with Safari. You know, for, so for example, when you pull up the Safari application, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate it in landscape mode. Well, first, let me just mention that you can open Safari in full screen when in landscape mode, which is really nice. But if you hit the return button down at the bottom, you now get all these buttons where you can email or send a text message, uh, post that web page to Twitter, Facebook. You can print it, copy it, bookmark it, add to your reading list, and add a home screen button. And it's not just integrated in with Safari as well. It's integrated with all of Apple's applications, including the App Store, as well as the podcast app. So, for example, if I open up the podcast app right now, I'm going to go to my Apple podcast, which I have already on my phone. Hit the return key at the top right. As you can see, I have the option to mail, send a text message, send a Twitter or Facebook or copy 
to inform people about my podcast, which is pretty cool. Likewise, you can do the same thing in the App Store or the iTunes Store. And another big improvement that came with iOS, iOS 6 is Siri integration. I mean, not only is Siri built into the new Maps application, but Siri will now open all of your applications. So you can, you can also tell Siri, for example, let me go ahead and pull Siri up here for a moment. Siri, open Mixel for the iPhone. And there you go, pretty cool. I use Mixel all the, all the time. So let me go ahead and make, make me a little Mixel real quick. Oh, okay, never mind. I realize I'm filming, maybe later. But I like having that kind of integration uh, with Siri, uh, with my applications. It just makes the whole user interface and the whole personal connection with your devices all the more meaningful. Another great new feature is Passbook. Uh, Passbook enables you to store all of your coupons and tickets in one place. People are very confused. They think it's an actual app where you can make purchases. It really isn't. It's just a central location for store, storing all of your things, you know, like your cards and coupons and so forth. There aren't a lot of stores that are on board yet, but they will be coming in droves very soon, I'm sure. Right now, there are stores like Target, Walgreens, United Airlines, Fandango, uh, and places like that. There's only about maybe eight to ten different stores right now or businesses that's using it and how you get the coupons into the app is you have to first download one of those applications in this case Target or Walgreens and then you have to set up your account uh, once you set up an account which you know, the, the accounts are free you'll then see an option to add coupons to Passbook so in this case I just focused on coupons because I didn't want to have to pay for anything I just wanted something that was free and available right away Walgreens and Target offers coupons right away once you set up an account. Um, and so I did that in the case of Walgreens. So I'm going to show you a little screenshot here of the whole process of what I went through adding the coupons to my passbook. And then once you go through the process, when you open up the passbook application, you'll then see your coupons are right there. And then when you go to those stores, the cashier would just scan those coupons and boom you got the deal okay arguably my best feature and I do mean my best feature with iOS 6 is the panorama app that's built into the camera app or should I say the panorama feature that's built into the camera app that is the native camera app on your iPhone it's Absolutely amazing and the reason why I'm enjoying it is because I've been a big panorama fan Ever since I've had my iPhone and I have about six panorama apps on my phone right now I mean some of them that are really great are 360 panorama and photo synth and you'll notice that Apple has Borrowed some of those features, but have integrated them into their app in a very unique and simplistic way I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up what you're seeing here is actually uh, my backyard and I'm just gonna go ahead and just pan around what you do is you click the options button when you have the camera open and then you'll see an option that says panorama so you hit panorama and then you'll you'll then see a little thumbnail on the left hand side and then an arrow with a line going through it you basically have to follow that line as you're panning from left to right as you're going around the room or in this case the yard so what you do is you hit camera and then you just go around like this and you want the arrow to stay on the line so that you're keeping your image stitched so it's uniform and then when you're done hit the camera and you pull up your image from the library and boom, you have a nice panorama. That simple. It's beautiful application and the clarity in the image is unbelievable. I mean, it's, it actually is better than any panorama, panorama app I've seen. And when you download the photograph, you'll notice that the size is a pretty nice pixel dimension. Uh, the last photograph I took, I didn't even go the full 240 degrees and it was a little over 2000 pixels in, in, uh, in uh, height and and width maybe close to or a little over 9,000 pixels 
There's no other application that I've come across that gives you that kind of clarity in terms of the pixel dimension and just the overall details that come <clears throat> with the image itself. So by far my favorite feature, but in general, I'm very excited about the iOS 6 upgrade. I'm sure you will too, especially if you have an iPhone 4S and or the new iPhone 5. Anyway, my name is Tim Brown. Thanks for tuning in to my Apple podcast. You can reach me at myapplepodcast.com or email me at myapplepodcast at gmail.com. See you later.